Okay. Okay, so in project time management, so there are only two among the uh, process groups, there are only two activities which are planning and monitoring and controlling. So process time management, so it includes all the processes required to accomplish the timely completion of the project. So making sure that you will complete the project on time or within the schedule. So for planning, so we have the following activities. So you have how to plan the uh, planning the schedule management. Second is define activities. Third is uh, the sequence of those activities. Fourth, estimating the resources or activity resources. Five is to estimate activity durations. And lastly is to come up or develop a schedule. And for monitoring and controlling, so we have controlling the schedule or control schedule. So what are the benefits of uh, having a project time management? So first, if you have a schedule, so the communication is improved among participants as they can see who does what and when they do it. So you can actually help your team or your uh, members to manage also their time and to know or to com communicate kung sa buhaton and when they should submit it. Second, project understanding is increased as all of the project work is depicted in the project schedule. So aside from the time, they will know what are the various activities ng pagabuhaton just to make the project. Third, you define the priorities and, milest and milestones are emphasized. And when depicted accurately, there should be no surprises. Okay. Fourth is resource allocation levels are known and can be planned. And performance reporting metrics can be traced from and to the project schedule. So you can see whether you are on time or you are on schedule or behind the schedule or you are uh, advanced. Next, uh, identification of critical tasks and critical time frames. So we will discuss this. So how to identify the critical tasks okay, or, or the critical time frames. And last benefit is uh, fewer project misdirections will occur if all the project work and the interrelationships of the project work are correctly captured. So if you can capture all the activities necessary for the project, so there should be fewer misdirections. Okay, so time management planning process. So na mention ni Gaina, so these are plan schedule, define activities, sequence activities, estimate activity resources, estimate activity durations, and lastly is to develop a schedule. So the primary output of project time management is to come up with a schedule. Okay, so plan schedule management. So it is the process of establishing the policies, procedures, and documentation for planning, developing, managing, executing, and controlling the project schedule. Okay. So <clears throat> schedule management plan. So what are the, uh, the details or the information that we can find in a, in, in a schedule management plan? So you have a scheduling methodology and tool to be used. Second is the level of accuracy, the acceptable range in determining activity estimates and use of contingency. Third is the units of measure. Fourth is schedule maintenance. Fifth is control thresholds. Fifth is rules of performance measurement. And last is the reporting format used. So for defining the activities, so it is the process of identifying your actions or specific actions to be performed to produce the various project deliverables. So in the project scope management, so we have the project and then the project is decomposed into several um, deliverables 
and then the deliverables are further decomposed into several activities so mas specific na dito ah so um that's why a part of the schedule management is to define the specific activities so work package decomposition so decomposing the project into activities then you have the rolling wave planning so a type of progressive elaboration in which there is an iterative planning of activities to be conducted so we say progressive elaboration so there could be activities nga wala na capture sa ato ang uh, time management plan so it must be updated okay so your schedule must also be updated so sequencing of activities so it's the process of identifying and documenting relationships among the project activities so which activities must come first okay or which activities are standalone so we say standalone it does not depend on other activities to be done okay. second is the common uh, the most common tool for understanding the interdependence among the different activities of the project is what we call the project schedule network diagram so later on i will discuss how to make a schedule uh, network diagram so so this is a sample of the network diagram so precedence programming method or also known as the activity on node node method so there are activities so you start so ne mga precedent activities so we call them precedent because other activities cannot be done with that without starting with them okay so after it is done then others can start Okay, and so on until it ends so we have four types of uh, four relationship types as to relationship of the activities so we have finish to start start to start finish to finish and start to finish so we say finish to start so it's the common type of relationship so um, an activity must be done first before another activity can start. So, for example, um, in accounting process, so we have to uh, journalize first before we can do the posting and other accounting activities. So that's finished to start. So you start, uh, you finish journalizing first, then you begin to uh, post or to uh, put them into the ledger start to start so these are projects or activities nga they can simultaneously start okay so if this activity can start i will start so letter b will also can also start uh implementing or pwede na siya masugdan og himo finish to finish so simultaneous uh nga mahuman sila so if this a is done Mopod si letter B. Okay. So that's finish to finish. And then start to finish. So a project is done, but pag mag start na nga, nga activity, the other project or the other activity will will be finished. Okay. So ma finish to siya if this activity will start. So we have three dependency types. Uh, we have the mandatory dependency, discretionary dependency, and external dependency. When you say mandatory, so an, a predecessor activity must be done to start at the to start the successor activity. So successor meaning that's the next activity. So just like gaina, so it's mandatory nga dapat magjournalize first before you can do the posting so out of physical necessity or out of the koan that's why it's called mandatory so the successor activity cannot be done unless the predecessor activity must be done first discretionary dependency so if it is suggested and not out of physical necessity so probably due to koan lang siguro 
uh, due to their meeting or sa ilang idea lang or professional judgment, they want to start this activity first. Okay? However, it's not really necessary nga kailangan mag-una gini siya. It was merely out of the suggestion lang. Okay? External dependency is so it's not within the team or the project team. So it is imposed by the individual organization and company external to the project. So for example, if uh, the projects are involved with mga different government projects, so you are partnering with a local government unit, and then they have a schedule. Okay. So the schedule being imposed to the to their partner okay, or to the to the firm or to the company nga muhimo an nga project okay so musunod yun sila ato nga schedule but this uh these people this individual organization are external to the uh to the making of the project leads and lags so lag is the successor activity that cannot start until the predecessor activity finishes. So magulat sa siyang mahumani nga activity before this activity can start. Okay. Lead is the opposite of lag. Okay, so the successor activity can start before its predecessor finish. So while the predecessor activity is ongoing, you can already start start doing the successor activity. Okay. Activity sequencing and not network diagrams. When all of the activities, dependencies, and relationships have, have been identified, so this is shown in the activity list, and then create the network diagram. So using the precedence diagramming method. So of course, uh, from the project down to the deliverables, then you now have the activity list. So the next thing to do is to come up with a network diagram. So which of these activities should come first and which should be the second and, and the last. So second, the network diagram shows the order of the work and it ensures the sequencing of activities. So helps determine the activity durations and the project completion date. So if you know the sequence of the activities okay, and you know the, the duration of each activity, then you can measure kung kanus ana siya mahuman niya project. It is also used to identify critical activities and the critical path. So which activities nga dili pwede ni mo langay lang ayun? Okay? So if these activities or series of activities malangan or madelay, it will cause a delay in the entire project so the diagramming method is also used to facilitate the what if mga mga exercises or mga uh, trial and error okay? so for example we have this activity list okay? so you have so our activities are named a b to a to i so a b c d e f g h i and then you have the predecessor so Kung say mag-una anak niya ng activity before it can start. So like for B, for B, so si A ang iyang predecessor. Then you have the duration for each activity. So 4 minutes, 10 minutes, 8 minutes. Okay. So we will use this activity list in coming up with a network diagram. So this is how the network diagram looks like. So if mahumana siya, so if you notice, the bus A and B are predecessors of, uh, ano, si B is, uh, si A is the predecessor of B. So that's why naguna si B. And then si B ang predecessors ni C O G, C E N G. Okay. And then. C, E, and G must be done first to be able to do D, F, and H activity. And then, pag mahuman na si D, F, and H, then, aya pa po ma, ma i work out si, ma work out si I nga activity. 
Okay, so self-check first. Okay, so your scenario number one, so your team member informs you that the test system must be refreshed with your test data before testing can begin. Okay, so your team member informs you that the test system must be refreshed with your test data before testing can begin. So what dependency is this? Okay, so you have three, debat right? external, discretionary, and mandatory. So we say mandatory, so it's out of physical necessity. Kinanglan yun siya nga, maguna. Discretionary is suggestion lang. Okay? So, but not out of physical necessity. Third is external. So this is imposed by outside the uh, project team, outside the project team. So, any type. So, mandatory, discretionary, or external dependency for scenario number one. Okay, that is okay. So that is right. So it is mandatory, kay kinanglan magit siya i um kailangan magit siya bahaton, di ba? So it's not out of uh suggestion or koan physical necessity. Scenario number two, so your sponsor informs you that you need local government approval of your proposed building design before you can begin this construction. So what type of dependency is this? So your sponsor informs you that you need a local government approval of your proposed building design before you can begin construction. Okay, identify what type of dependency is that. Okay, so all right. So, yes, the answer is external dependency. Okay, so next, scenario number three. So you have two activities, A and B. Once A begins, then B can also begin. So this relationship is best described as, so diba? remember you have four types of activity relationship. You have the start to finish, um, start to start, finish to finish, and finish to start. So if you have this scenario, what type of relationship is this? So you have two activities, A and B. Once A begins, then B can also begin. This relationship is best described as Okay, so your answers, yes, okay, you got it right. So it's a start-to-start -start relationship. Okay. So next, um, so it is the process of estimating the type and quantities of material P 
people, equipment, or supplies required to perform each activity. So after identifying the activities, then the next step is to identify kung saan resources ang kailangan kailangan to 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 be able to perform the said activity. So materials needed, uh, people or the human resource needed for that activity, equipment or the supplies. So you have the types of resources. So you have the people. So the types and skills, competency and salary levels. Equipment. So what, which equipment or what equipment do you need? The knowledge or so what particular knowledge is necessary to be able to do the activity. Support the services, supplies and uh, facilities. Okay. So what type of space, location, configuration and test facilities. So activity duration. So after identifying the resources needed, now is the estimation of the number of work periods needed to complete the individual activities. Okay. So how much time do you need okay, for the reasonable time you can finish the activity? So next, uh, effort, duration, and elapsed time. So it is important to understand uh, the relationships between the effort, duration, and elapsed time, as well as the factors that affect them. So you check out the diagram to see how everything fits together. Okay, so for the effort, so you have the quantity of work and resource productivity. So the amount of time you need to, to do the job and the resources you will use. So that's for the effort. As to the duration, so the resource availability will also be considered like how many working hours can the said employee can, can commit sa said niya activity. Okay? Especially if can you put silang mga tao na apuilain niya work aside from the project. So how many hours a day ang kaya lang niya i-commit for the said project? And then from that, uh, it, the duration will also be estimated. Elapsed time, so the non-working time. Okay, So it includes your breaks, the holidays. Okay, So this must also be considered okay, in the scheduling. So you do not only consider the time duration for each activity, but also the days include in your calendar the, the holidays or the time nga walay trabaho. So we have already discussed the estimating methodology. So you have the analogous parametric estimate and then, and then the pure bottom-up estimate. So in the time management, you can also perform these methodologies. So the analogous lang is how many hours ba to gitrabaho nga project? So if you have a similar project in the past, how many hours was uh, was given or tanus amato na human? Okay. What is the duration of that project? Parametric estimate. So it's the number of hours, the units, etc. How many man hours was needed to do the job? And how many units of materials is needed? Or what type of resources ang kailangan? In the pure bottom up, so it's a more detailed. Okay? So especially if it's a first time project, so most likely you will have a pure bottom up estimate. So just a review of the PERT or the project evaluation review. So aside from the budget, so it is also used in the time. Okay. So the activity duration. So formula. So the expected time is equals to the optimistic time to finish the activity plus four times plus four times the most likely time to finish the activity plus 
uh, the time or the pessimistic time to finish the said activity. Then divided by 6. So just like what we did with the cost management, so it can also, the PERT can also be used to um, compute the expected time considering the risk, optimistic time and pessimistic time. So developing the schedule. So it is the process of analyzing activity sequences, durations, resource requirements, and schedule constraints to create the project schedule. Okay, so these are terms that you need to be familiar with. So the critical method. So using the PERT or the project evaluation review technique, so we can actually identify the critical path. So before that, so these are the terms that you need to be familiar with. So the duration is the number of work periods, early start, so the earliest date the activity can begin. So pinakasayong a date that the activity can start. Then you have the late start or the latest date the activity can begin. Then you have the float, okay, or also known as the slack, okay, or the delay. So how long can the activity be delayed without having a schedule constraint? So so delaying the activity without actually um, going beyond the project schedule. Early finish, so the earliest date the activity can finish. And the late finish is the latest date the activity can finish. Okay, so you can now uh, use your calculators. So the bar we started with the activity list. Okay, so money atong nako nakita na na buong diagram. So durations can be added in the activity list while forward pass is used to determine the duration of the project. So before para ma picture out na to, so so remember this Okay, so dito na to gibase na siya. Okay, so can you can have a screenshot if you want. So activity list. And then this is the network diagram. So, predecessor ni B is A, predecessor ni C, E, and G is C, activity B, predecessor ni D, F, and H, I mean C, D, predecessor ni S, C, C, F, C, E, C, H, C, G. And then, after performing D, F, and H, so we, we can now start C, activity I. So remember the duration. So four minutes. D is six minutes. E is six minutes. F is five minutes. G is sixteen minutes. H is four. Then I is four. Okay. Okay, so for those who are not around today, so of course uh, this class is recorded, so they can just refer to the koan. The they can just view the recorded class. Okay, so let's go back to the to the critical path. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So to confirm, so you can use your calculator. 
So durations can be added in the activity list while the forward pass is used to determine the duration of the project. So forward pass will be in the next slide. So for the duration, so ito na, gibutangan na siya. 4 minutes, A, B is 10, C is 8, E is 6, G is 16, D is 6, 5, 4, and 2. So these are the duration for each activity. So notice nga naan siya unum kada activity, di ba? So unsa yung gamit ani nila. So you have to, to fill in na na siya mga corresponding nga mga um, unsa yung naadira per uh, per box. So forward stop, forward pass. So we use the forward pass to identify the early start. Okay? Early start and also the early finish of the activities so remember this so the start time of the project is the early start of the project okay so the starting time of the project is the early start which is the zero the early finish of each activity is the early start plus estimated duration of the activity so to compute for the early finish you add the early start plus the duration of each activity. The early start of the success, successor activity, so mga succeeding activities, is the early finish of the predecessor activities. And then for activities that are with more than one predecessor, the early start will be the, early, the latest early finish of the immediate predecessors. Okay, so... Para mas masabtan eh. so, so we have the illustration. So start. So, ading na sa second niya koan. This is for the early start and early finish. So early start for it, letter A, kaya wala siya may pinakauna. So that's zero plus four. That's the duration for A. So the early finish for activity A is four. Then for B, so that's uh, si B kay predecessor man niya si A. So the early start of B, so kung kanun saan na tumasugdan si B, is pagka 4 minutes pa, after 4 minutes. So durations, aning activity, so that's 4 plus 10 is equals to 14. 14 is the early finish for B. Si B is the predecessor of C, E, and G. So, gi-copy-paste lang nato ang early finish ni B. Muna ang may mong early start ni C, E, and G. So, that's why kanina naka-orange. So, you have the early start, 14, 14, 14. So, gikun sa pagkuha ang early finish, that's 14 plus 8, na duration nila. So, 14 plus 8, you have 22. For E, that's 20. For G, it's 30. So, gipang add. Now, to identify the early, uh, no problem with letter D, kay, si Sima ng iyang, uh, yung predecessors. So, the early finish of letter C is the early start of D. The 6. Okay. For F, Early start is 20, plus 5 is 25. Then for G, that's 30, plus 4 is 34. Now we have see letter I, delete din siya letter A, that's letter I. For the early start, dagan mag predecessor si I, that's D, F, and H. According to the forward pass, a pinaka late or a pinaka dugay mo ay early start ni I. So a pinaka dugay is letter H which is 34. So that's the early finish of letter H. So we use that as an early start of I. So 34 plus 2 is 36. So from this uh, schedule or from this forward pass, we can now conclude or we can, we can now say that this project will take about 36 minutes. So si I am determine. Okay. So from... 
start to finish, it will take about 36 minutes. Okay, so that's for the forward pass. So we're done with the early start and then the early finish. Now let us compute the late start and the late finish using the backward pass and then computing for the float or the slack or the delay. So in the backward pass, so the backward pass can occur once the forward pass has completed. So it cannot be done without doing the forward pass first. Backward is used to determine the critical path and the float. Okay, so the late start of each activity is the late finish duration. So we say critical path, these are activities nga walay float or walay slack. Okay, so you cannot delay those project, those activities. So the late start of each activity is the late finish of duration, the late finish duration. I mean, late finish minus uh, duration. So kung kaya na nag-add ta, karon mag-deduct. The late finish of each predecessor activity is the late start of the immediate successor. Okay, so for activities of more than one successor activities, late finish will be earliest late start of the immediate successor. Okay, so I know it does not make sense now, but I will illustrate that. Uh, float or slack is the amount of time that an individual activity schedule can be delayed without delaying the entire project finish date. Okay? So let's compute the backward pass. So kay backward man siya, so mag ta sa last. Okay? So for I, so the late, the early finish, since siya man ang pinaka last, so that will serve as the late finish. Okay? So kanang 36, that's the late finish. So ang late start is uh, computed by deducting the late finish sa iyang duration. So 36 minus 2 is 34. Then, muna ang late start ni I. So, mosad ni ang late finish ni D, F, and H. So that's why you have 34, 34, and 34. To get, to, to get the late start, you simply deduct the late finish sa duration. So for D, that's 34 minus 6, 28. 34 minus 5 is 29. Then 34 minus 4 is 30. Okay. So what is the late start of the successor is the late finish of their predecessor. So for H, that's 30, ang late finish niya. So for E, that's 29. And then C is 28. Again, to get the late start, you deduct the late finish sa iyang duration. So that's why 30 minus 16 is 14. 29 minus 6 is 23. Then 28 minus 8 is 20. Okay? Now you have three successor activities for B. Okay? So, kung saman niya activity atong gamiton to determine the Late finish for activity B. Okay. So, according to the backward pass rule, dapat ang pinakasayo. Okay? So, ang pinakasayo man is si 14, which is activity G. So, the late finish for activity B is 14 minus the duration niya 10 minutes. So, you have 4. Then, notice nga ang early start or early finish for activity A is also the same late start and late finish for the same activity. Okay. So now what's what's the next activity? So isa na lang ka box ang nabilin. Okay. So kanang box that is for the computation of the delay or the slack. Okay. So we can compute the delay or slack by either I minus ni mo ang early start of early finish or ang late start of late finish. Okay, so so four minus zero, it's either four minus zero or mas kaya sa anak nila. So you have a slack of zero. Okay. 
Okay, so no, no. It's actually four minus um, deride na siya. Difference of the late finish, and then uh, the early finish, or it could be the result of the early uh, the late start and minus the early start. So either sa ilang duha. So in this case, si A four minus four is zero. Fourteen minus four is fourteen is zero. For letter C, na nasilay delay, di ba? So either any 20 minus 14 or 28 minus 22, you will have the same result. Okay, so they have C, activity C has a delay, can be delayed by 6 minutes. C, 20, uh, C, E, 29 minus 20, so you have 9. So C, E can be delayed by 9 minutes without delaying the entire project. C, G, wala siya slack. 30 minus 30 is 0. And then for uh, D, that's a uh, 6 minute nya slack. 20, 34 minus 28. For F, that's 9. H, do not have a slack. And then lastly, CI si is, is also 0. Now, for those nga walay delay, walay slack, that's what we call the critical path. So meaning, if you delay a, either A, B, G, H, or I, okay, maski as saan yung activity ang ma-delay, it will delay the entire project. Okay, so pwede na siya ma-behind schedule. So it's called critical, okay? You will uh, mostly manage your, or focus your time controlling these activities, kaning mga critical path. So kaning si C, D, E, and F, they can be delayed. So, pwede na sila ma-delay. But si A, B, G, and H, and I, they cannot be delayed. Okay? So, kaning si A, B, G, H, and I, this is the critical path for the project. So, critical path, so these are the series of activities uh, with the longest total duration and which also represents the shortest duration in which all of the activities of the project can be completed. So, it is actually the minimum time nga makomplete ang project. So, it estimates the early date. So, we can estimate the early date and the late date for the start and finish of each activity within the project. So, the objective of this method is to calculate and identify float in order to determine which activities in the project have the same amount of schedule flexibility. So, si C, D, E, and F are flexible. So, so pasabot ana. If the resources nga gigamit aning activity can be used sa mga critical path, so pwede na siya kay naman tay slack. So for example, C cannot start on dili mahaman si B. Okay? And it, it can still be done even if na i-delay nga 6 minutes. So especially if makita ni mo nga mga critical path activities na possibility nga dili siya mo, mo, mo go sa iyang uh, estimated niya duration. So the tendency is to allocate more resources. Okay? Perhaps doon nga ganimog tao dira kaya na pa may, na may activities nga walay or na sila'y bakante. So pwede ni mo ipadugang sa mga critical path para masayo o guman or maka mahuman sila on schedule. Okay? So the resources or the equipment not yet used in other activities can be committed to this uh, can be used temporarily o pwede sa paggamit sa nimo aning mga critical path okay so that's the critical path so a b g h and i so what is why is it necessary to identify the critical path and those activities nga not with not uh, wala siya sa critical path. So, in some projects or some contracts, uh, there could be provisions that penalizes the contractors if the project is delayed. Okay? So, in some contracts, ang mga contractor mo bayad daw penalty if the, there's a delay in the project. Okay? 
So it is a possible that a company will pay penalty cost for the delayed projects. So it depends on the contract, no? So um, na iban nga mag na penalty na iban nga wala. Okay. For those nga na penalty, so to avoid penalty, the company or management can speed up the project by putting more resources like people, materials, and machines. So para mas mahuman og dali. So instead of working 8 hours a day, so pwede mag 24 hours para lang yun nga mas speed up ang uh, process, especially sa mga critical path activities. So you will put more people, you will put more resources, you will use more machines. So what that's what we call crashing, okay? Crashing the project, okay? However, this crashing is not free. So for example, kung doon agad ni mong tao, Siyempre, magpasweldo ka na sa ila. Or if you requested nyo mag-overtime sila, you have to pay for their overtime. Or perhaps you will uh, pay for another machine. So there is a cost. Okay? So as much as we want to avoid the penalty, okay? but remember, uh, we have to ask kung crashing, uh, crashing activities is uh, lower compared to the penalty cost. Kaya basin unya, mas dako pa yung mabayaran if you crash the, uh, mas dako pa mabayaran sa crashing kaysa magbayad na lang og penalty. Okay? So quantitatively speaking, okay? so to decide whether to crash, so the crashing cost should not be more than the penalty. Okay? So dapat dili mas dako yung gigasto sa crashing kaysa sa penalty nga yung bayaran. Otherwise, then you should just pay the penalty rather than doing the crashing. Okay? That's why I said quantitatively because diba, always a, uh, in a counting point of view, the cost should always be uh, lower than its benefits. Okay? However, qualitatively, you can may, you may consider other factors like perhaps makaguba sa imong reputation okay? as contractor nga sige rakag kadili sa imong project. Okay? So that's another consideration. But for quantity quantitatively, okay? So the crashing cost should not be more than the penalty. Okay? Otherwise, you just uh, pay the penalty rather than paying more sa crashing. So in presenting schedules, we have two ways. You can use the gun chart or using the milestone and summary schedule. So in the gun chart, uh, it shows the start and end for each activities. Second, it visually presents activities and their durations. Third is, it is frequently used in team management and management, uh, in team and management presentations. So it is what we use to, to show our stakeholders or our sponsors. And it can be developed using the common software packages or you can use even Microsoft Word pwede ka makahimo o gun chart. Second milestone and summary schedule so you identify the major events of the project deliverables so you use the milestones so which have no direction. Third is it is our, it are, the milestone and the schedule are often associated with the charter and lastly it is supported by activities on detailed schedules. So last is the control schedule to update the project progress and managing changes to the schedule baseline. So the plan schedule can serve as a control measure. So you can use the plan schedule if na ay mga deviations of plan, then can, that can be investigated and planned for the next step. So nung na may wala na follow sa schedule, ang say problem. Or is it the plan ang problem or the implementation of the plan? Okay. So you can take uh, you can take note of that for so, so that in the next um, project with similar similar project ma ma address na, na siya nga problem. Right. Okay. So this is I I want to show you the gun chart.
ano, kani sa una. Okay, so the activity. So money a work breakdown structure. So your pro my project is setting up the accounting system. So these are my deliverables. The flow chart, the trial balance, uh, hiring of the new. You you see there is there is uh, an activity or series of activities for each deliverable. So that's for the accounting systems flow chart. For the trial balance, Monisha. Okay, and then preparing the trial financial statements. These are the steps or activities. So sequence. So Monisha. So you have to identify the task name. So we did any mode butangan lag number or WBS ID or work breakdown structure ID. Then what is the task name or the activity related to that? The predecessor. And then the time needed. So akong indicate dia is the number of days. So na yoban activity can be done uh, half day. Okay. okay, so that's for the activity list. So from this you can perform a network diagram to identify the project schedule. Okay, so uh, that's the milestone or the summary schedule. If you want to see how the GAN chart looks like, okay. So for example, this is a uh, okay, so visibility study for an MIS. Okay. So there are I think there are four components of the MIS, the human resource. So these are the tasks. And these are the, okay, so kanang mga naka blue, that's the duration for each activity. So mas dali siya i-present. So one look lang kay Balo na kapila ka months siya buhaton. Okay. And who's the spot? Asa mag-start, asa mag-finish. This is for the administrative management. For the revenue generation. And lastly, it's for the physical resource management information system. Okay, so those are this is the sample na gun chart. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm done with the presentation, so any questions or clarification? Okay, so backward pass. So, so the backward pass is mag start ka sa likod. Okay, sa finish nga. So this, this is the backward pass pass. So you start kung sa forward pass nag start ka sa activity A. Sa backward pass you will start with activity I. Okay? So wala problema sa last activity kay just cap you copy paste the Early start and the early finish. Okay. 
So that will serve as the late start and late finish. Okay, so muna siya nga. 34 man ang late finish ni I. So it will be the late, ano, it's 34 minutes is the late start. So gyan sa pagkuha ang 34. So it's 36 minus 2. Okay. So muna imong ma consider nga late finish ni activity D, F, and H because muna ni iyang predecessor. Now again to get the slack, ano, to get the to get the late, late start, you deduct the late finish sa iyang duration per activity. So that's why 34 minus 6, you have 28. 34 minus 5, 29. 34 minus 4 is 30. So for D, so kopyaan lang ni mo ang late start ni D at mo na may mong late finish ni C. Same with F and G. Then for B, ang pili o ni mong uh, late, late finish niya is katong uh, lowest. Okay? Naka early nga late finish. A uh, late start. So which is 14. So muna ay may mong late finish. Minus 10 is 4. So sa start, wala yung problema. Copy paste ni mo 4. Minus 4 is 0. Okay, so that's backward pass. Okay. However, um, aside from my discussion, so you can check the video. So mas ko ang yuto dito mas, uh, mas, mas comprehensive. Iwam din ako na show ang ko an screen. Okay, so mas ko an pato siya mas, uh, mas dagan patog time nga ma na explain dito sa video sa kato akong gi-share sa kuan sa Neo LMS. Okay, so you can revisit okay the network diagram. Okay. So Monisha, you start at the, at the back. So 36 minus 24 copy paste 34 deducted sa ilang durations. So that will be their late finish, a late start. Okay. So the purpose of computing the forward pass and backward pass is to compute the the float or the delay. Okay, so anyway, so just uh, watch the videos that I have uploaded in the Neo LMS. Okay. Right? Okay, so <clears throat> if you notice, I have already uh, set up a team okay, for the, uh, so aside from the quiz, so naapod mo in assessment. So it's a team assessment. And by the way, the team that I have assigned to you, okay, or the members nga, imong, ka, uh, imong mga kagrupo, those are the same people nga imong makauban during the final presentation of your project charter. Okay. So, pero assignment sa, assessment sa. So, kato akong gimension. So, I will upload this in the resources tab. Okay, so kaning project charter. Your first um, network diagram for this activity sequence. So, kato akong gipakita gay na. So, come up with a network diagram and then identify the critical path for the project. Okay. So, which numbers ang nabilong sa critical path. So, that's, that's the first assessment. And then for the project, so, wala na lang na ako gilimit to management, accounting, and financial management niya topics. So, among yourselves, uh, you are free to, kuan. you are free to choose, okay? Kung unsang a project inyong buhaton. Basta as long as it fits the definition of a project. Okay? Maybe personal or whatever. Okay? Business purposes. So, it's up to you. Okay? So, uh, as a group or as a team, so, you decide which projects are you gonna uh, present or gonna use to come up with the charter or the project charter.
Okay. Any questions?